So let's continue. Let's just continue with part with the part, the next part of this, we'll call part two of this. Now, what you're seeing before you is um, Reverend James Morris Webb. James Morris Webb, he was the first um, proclaimer or announcer of Ras Tefari when he said, look to Africa where a black man will be crowned king. In him, you will find the Redeemer. And right down here, let's let's zoom in down here to this article. See this article right here. Let's zoom in right here where it says that on November 1921, <coughs> Webb asserted that Garvey was the Moses of the modern age. This is why you know we have to when we're speaking about Garvey, um, the latter Garvey reminds us of, of the lad to John the Baptist, where John the Baptist, when he was in prison, he uh, basically um, recanted his testimony. He perjured himself when when uh, the Baptist basically said, are you the one that we look for or do we expect another? This is why Christ in St. Matthew's chapter 11 would say some very interesting things concerning concerning John the Baptist, and it was the statements concerning John the Baptist that we had to study and study again, because once we recognized what Garvey had said about his imperial majesty later on, the I mean, that was so treasonous, you know, that, that was actually deserving of death, and that was the judgment. But in Matthew chapter 11, he says, from the days of John the Baptist until the uh, until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. This is basically what we witness, and what we witness in the fascist invasion of Ethiopia. But we have to recognize that Garvey was was like a Moses, like a point man, because he was able to. He was able to be that 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 figure that everyone looked at, but a lot of his information had come and was based on what others, other unsung heroes and sheroes, had actually put out and done. And this is the reason why we have this particular picture as well. Let's see if we can bring up this particular picture of some of the the founding the founding um the founding brothers right here let's see if we can bring this up so you can see some of the early african-american i like to call them rastafari because they were rastafari or black hebrews um and here we go right here this is um four of them four that we find to be um very important to our story here as the once lost but now found Beta Israel. The first one is the prophet, who was known as the prophet William Saunders Crowdy. He founded the first African American uh, black Hebrew church and community that's known on record. And this is, this is the brother right here, uh, William Saunders Crowdy. And next to him is Rabbi Wentworth Arthur Matthews. He founded the Commandment Keepers Congregation, and he's the one who's the main um, subject matter, as well as his community, the book um, The Black Jews of Harlem, um, written by Howard Brotz. And that book is available, and it's out there, the Black, the Black Jews of Harlem. So this brother, and then these two brothers, the Hebrew, the, the, the Hebrew part of reclaiming our Hebrew identity, and then below them, we have Reverend James Morris Webb, or who we call Jacob or Yaakov, and we have uh, Rabbi, this is Rabbi right here, Rabbi uh, uh, Arnold uh, Josiah Ford, who wrote the anthem, the Ethiopian anthem, that the UNIA used as its Ethiopian anthem. You know, the Ethiopia, the land of our fathers, the land where the gods or the Elohim love to be. This is written by this particular brother, not Marcus Garvey. So we have um, Yaakov or, or Jacob, Reverend James. James is Jacob. And Rabbi Arnold Josiah, Josiah. So we have Josiah and, and Jacob here. He, 
uh, Reverend James Morris Webb was the first proclaimer of Rastafari, and he was a member and worked along with Garvey until Garvey began to show more and more his true colors, similar to how it was with John the Baptist. John the Baptist was the, the forerunner, but later on when he got incarcerated or, or jailed, he started to doubt, and doubt is the daughter of the devil. He started to doubt, and that doubt caused Christ to make this particular proclamation where in Matthew chapter 11, verse 7, it says, And as they departed, Jesus began to say to the multitudes concerning John, and we say this, I, when them Yadin say this concerning Marcus Garvey, what went ye out into the wilderness, the wilderness of North America, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad called it, to see a reed shaken with the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, look and see, they that wear soft clothing are in kings' houses. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say to you, and more than a prophet, for this is he. Now we say this concerning Marcus Garvey. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verily, verse 11. Now notice this. Matthew chapter 11, verse 11, 11, 11. We're coming up to a time, 11, 11 right now, and there's a lot of um, um, speculation about what the present 11, 11 can mean. There's a movie and stuff coming about about the 11, 11, at, or, or on 11, 11 as well. But here in St. Matthew's chapter 11, verse 11, here's, here's the penultimate, here's the point. Verily, or the Amen, Bonet, in truth I say to you, among them that are born of woman, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. We might have to say this concerning Marcus Garvey. Among all the Negroes in America, there's probably not a greater in a in a real sense than Marcus Garvey, but notwithstanding, nevertheless, he that is least, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Now, what does this what does this mean? That Christ is saying that this of of men who were born of Negroes in America or of the Americas or the lost sheep that were born, there's probably not a greater one more significant one than Marcus Messiah Garvey, but he who is least in the kingdom, in the kingdom of the King of Kings and his Christ, is greater than he. What does this mean? Well, the Schofield Study Bible says down here, it says, positionally greater, not morally. Positionally, positionally in the position. We cannot, you can't take Marcus Garvey out of the place he's in. You, 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 even though these are the unsung, these are the unsung um, brothers who really established, we can say, who, who put the movement and gave the movement a groundation and a foundation. That gave it a groundation and a foundation. However, positionally speaking, positionally speaking, Garvey has his place, has his role, and nothing can basically take that to take that away, that he has his, his role and his position, and nothing can take that away from Marcus Garvey. However, let's understand these words of Christ concerning John the Baptist, because it's only by understanding these words of Christ concerning John the Baptist that we will be able to put the Marcus Garvey and Hila Selassie, uh, let's say, relationship into proper context, because personally, after reading and hearing what Garvey said, I wouldn't want anything to do with Garvey, even as a Rastafari, even though this puts me at odds with many other so-called Rasta-ish and Rastafari people, but I wouldn't want anything to do with him. But see, it's not doing our wills. It's not our wills be done. It is thy will be done. And I'm pointing this out because when ones and ones have gathered that truth or have been able to get the truth concerning Marcus Messiah Garvey and learn what he said and what he did and potentially how 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 his legacy um 
uh, disaffected the movement, many would just curse him. And initially we did this, but we had to repent even ourselves. And it's not saying that we're not like some Rastas or Rasta-ish people out there that in spite of the truth, they hypocritically deny that. But it's the scriptures and the word and being conformed um, to the image of his son. And his son is, is spirit and in truth. So conform to the spiritual image of righteousness. And this speech of Christ, this word of Christ in Matthew chapter 11, puts it into perfect context. And here we, we use this for, for our, our understanding of Garvey's true role from the kingdom side of it, not from us here in the world or in Babylon or in Jamaica or so forth and so on, but from the king of kings perspective, therefore from his Christ perspective. 11.11, Matthew 11.11, Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of woman, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Among the lost sheep of the Beta Israel, there has not arisen a greater than Marcus Messiah Garvey. Now it's interesting because um, Christ was born, or Yeshua was born after. Wasn't he born after John the Baptist? <laughs> but let's understand what he's saying. He says, notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom is greater than he. So positionally he's greater, but not morally. Positionally greater, but not morally. John the Baptist was as great morally as any man born of woman such as the same with Marcus, Messiah, and Garvey. But as to the kingdom, this is, this, this is where the real rubber screeched when it met the road concerning the kingdom. And, and when you start to read what Garvey um, would write and would say and would slander and would blaspheme and, and would basically um, destroy himself because of the kingdom, it was the, and this is the same with John the Baptist in that sense. But as to the kingdom, he but announced it at hand. But we know that it wasn't only John the Baptist that talked about the kingdom. There were many others before him, and this is what we show you right here. There were many others, you understand, before him who announced the kingdom, such as James Morris Webb. Significantly, this is the most significant one right here. But... He but announced it at hand. The kingdom did not then come, but was rejected. But he also rejected the king of kings, though he announced it, Marcus Garvey. He rejected it. And John Garvey, one can say he was martyred symbolically. We're comparing John the Baptist to Marcus Garvey here. And the king presently crucified, and Halle Selassie was crucified. You know, saying crucified in the events of the Italian fascist invasion of Ethiopia, which is a very significant, is a very significant um, revelation of prophecy. Because in Revelation, it talks about those who dress in white raiment and 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 their martyrdom, and how the beast and the, the Antichrist comes out against them. And and remember, there was Rome or Italy and the Vatican, and they're supposed to be so-called a Christian, so it's like Christian against Christian. But it was Antichrist versus the coming of Christ in his kingly character. And Christ in his kingly character, Haile Selassie, was presently crucified on the world stage. Hence, League of Nations, so forth and so on. So the least in the kingdom, when it is set up in glory, he's the least now in the kingdom. When, 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 this, when the kingdom of the king of kings is set and reset, or let's say rebooted in glory, Marcus Garvey must become the least. He will be the least. He will be there. We cannot ignore the truth and say, because we don't like what he said, he's not there. But he is the least in the kingdom when it's set up in glory. Now, this will be in the fullness of power and glory. It is not heaven which is in question concerning Matthew 11.11. 11. It's not heaven, but it's the messianic kingdom. Now, can we take something from this for today, for what's going on today with, with the 1111 and the Elenine and the Biru? It is not 
heaven that's in question. People looking up in the sky and wondering what's going to happen. That, that's not the real question. It's the kingdom of the king of kings and his Christ. That is, that is the real question. That's the real matter. That's the real matter which concerns, which concerns us and which concerns the true and the faithful concerning the king of kings and his Christ. Now let's look at this, continue with um, Reverend James Morris Webb in this portion of an article of concerning James Morris Webb. Now here it says that Webb asserted that Garvey was the Moses of the modern age. In a lecture entitled, The Garvey Movement is Biblical. And in a pamphlet, he had the pamphlet, The Black Man Will Be the Coming Universal King. Notice this, The Negro World, the 29th July, 1922. So this is 1922 that Reverend James Morris Webb was uttering this, these, particular, these particular words. Further, on the 15th of September over here, it says uh, 1924, the New York Times reported, and this is now a report by the New York Times, let's bring that up so you can see this right here. The New York Times reported, let's bring it um, about 400. Yeah, the New York Times reported on a web address under the headline that says, a black man will rule the world. New York Times, September 15th, 1924. September 15th, 1924. So you can, because people, people want, you know, people want proof, right? And, and people should have proof. But now after they get the proof, what will they do with this proof? Now, here, down here, says Webb's prophecy that the black man will be the coming universal king is part of the current ideas that said, from Garveyism, some say, to Rastafarianism. So Garvey, like John the Baptist and the Baptist movement, received the credit for it. But we can clearly see who said what and when they said what and who really was feeding who. Garvey had the movement like John the Baptist had the movement, but it was others who were making those links and, 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 and grasped. Christ when he had come forward. Now, the Reverend James M. Webb, evangelist and former resident here who is remembered for his sermons in Seattle nearly 30 years ago, is a visitor in the city and plans to speak at Negro churches on, quote, a colored king is coming to stop all wars. Let's, let's zoom this in right here so you can see this full screen. A coming a, a colored king is coming to stop all wars. Mr. Webb believes the Bible makes reference to a colored king, that's to say to a black king coming to end war and has written a book on the subject. Now, much of this is true and did happen during the time of his imperial majesty, especially when you compare it to what's going on today. There was that, there was that like half an hour space this half an hour space that was in heaven. So it is to James Morris Webb that we must give due credit to the utterance concerning look to Africa, not just generally to the east, but look to Africa where a black man will be crowned king. In him you will find the Redeemer. In addition, it says down here that a picture of Jesus as a colored man with woolly hair and a book proving the same price was one dollar then that he also recognized the importance of the true image since Christ Jesus is the express image of God. It is important to recognize the true image of Christ and not to be as many who say that that does not matter. So this is just a little bit of an update on that matter of um, who was the first to proclaim and really more about Reverend James Morris Webb who proclaimed this very prophetic scene that we see a painting from St. George uh, Cathedral, St. George a Church in Addis Ababa where we witness Christ 
in his kingly character. So stay tuned, my brothers and sisters. More to come. Shalom. Rastafari. <laughs>